Matt Rule, Deion Sanders. Who's excited for this battle between these two men? I know I am. This is Sports Guy talking that you guys are watching and listening to. I am Dustin Tran, your host, as I am here today to talk about Deion Sanders being ahead of his rebuild, even though he had a far worse situation in Colorado to deal with. Even though Matt Rule was a former NFL head coach, it seems like that has not translated well to the college game as he has still made basic mistakes in his head coaching debut for Nebraska against an unranked Minnesota opponent. As for Deion Sanders in Colorado, they just pulled off an upset against TCU who was in the national championship game just last season. Before I say anything else though, I want to present you guys with a topic question. So here it is. Will Deion Sanders own Matt Rule in their rebuilds? Obviously the answer to that question is yes. Deion Sanders will absolutely own Matt Rule in their rebuilds because of the fact that Deion Sanders is a natural born winner. Because of the fact that Deion Sanders knows what he's doing. Because of the fact that Deion Sanders is an actual motivator of college kids. Because of the fact that Deion Sanders actually has a plan in place and that he knows how to put in the work in order to put out a winning product sooner rather than later. As for Matt Rule, what is he good for? He is good for being a car salesman and making excuses and scamming people out of money. Outside of that, Matt Rule is not a good head coach whatsoever. And before somebody says, oh, I'm being a hater on Matt Rule because he failed in the NFL. No, that's not the reason why I trash Matt Rule. I trash Matt Rule because he lacks any accountability whatsoever. Every time something goes wrong with Matt Rule, oh, it's this guy's fault. Oh, I didn't have enough time. Oh, I didn't know that I had to win in year one. Oh, I didn't know that if you didn't execute in two minutes, you could possibly lose the game. Okay, that last part he didn't say out loud. That's the way that he acts all the time. He acts like he is never responsible for anything bad that happens. Well, anytime something good happens, Matt Rule says, oh yeah, I'm the man. I'm the guy that built all this up. And that's why you see all these people trash Matt Rule because of the fact that it seems like he takes no accountability whatsoever. While when he wins, he always says, oh, it's all about me. But when he loses, it's all about the players. And Matt Rule, he's just not a very good head coach whatsoever. I don't care what level you're talking about. And before somebody says, oh, he turned around Baylor and Temple. I'm going to say the reason why he was so successful at Temple was because he had an NFL caliber quarterback in that conference. Well, nobody else in that conference had an NFL caliber quarterback. You know who that quarterback was? It was PJ Walker. Now, I'm not going to sit up here and say that PJ Walker was an amazing quarterback in the NFL or anything like that. He certainly isn't. But PJ Walker was a heck of a lot better than the opponents that Temple were playing against. I would hope that PJ Walker would be able to dominate the conference that they were going up against. I would be able to hope that Matt Rule could take advantage of that. So I'll give Matt Rule credit for being able to find a hidden gem in PJ Walker, but that's about it. That's why he was so good at a Temple, because of the fact that he had PJ Walker while the other teams in that conference didn't have NFL caliber quarterbacks. And as for the turnaround of Baylor, yeah, I give him a good job for being able to turn around that scandal, but you guys also have to remember that, hey, it's not exactly like Matt Rule was doing that great of a job at Baylor. He went 0 11 against ranked opponents, and he never won a single bowl game. Anytime Matt Rule played in a big game for Baylor, his teams always came out flat and they were always unprepared. There's a reason why Matt Rule is 2 and 16 overall against ranked opponents in his collegiate coaching career. It's because of the fact that Matt Rule led teams are constantly not well prepared whatsoever. And that's one of the reasons why Nebraska lost to Minnesota. Yeah, you could say that they played well for stretches against Minnesota, but it's not exactly like Minnesota is a great football team either. Minnesota might be a decent team in the Big Ten. I wouldn't say that they're that good of a team either, but I could also say that they were clearly unprepared for two minute drill and four minute offense. And I say that because of the fact that during the two minute offense, they were driving down the field, 28 seconds left from the six yard line, they call it inside zone, the guy gets five yards, then they're at the one yard line, they call a quarterback sneak, he scores, but the offensive lineman gets a false start. So they end up having to call timeout. That means that Nebraska has no timeouts left. Now they're back up to the six yard line. Jeff Sims decided, you know what? It's a good idea to go ahead and throw an interception right into the defender, into the end zone, right before halftime, where it costed them three points, possibly even seven points if he had made the right read, but it costed Nebraska points heading into the half, which is why Nebraska didn't score any points heading into halftime. I bet in the second half, yeah, they scored a touchdown on a fluky trick play. They didn't even run the trick play right, but it worked out, so I'll give them credit for that. And then they're leading 10 to 3 in the fourth quarter. Their running back, Anthony Grant, ends up fumbling the football. And Minnesota, they end up recovering the ball. Minnesota drives down the field. They convert two fourth downs in that series. And they end up scoring a touchdown, making it 10 to 10. And that's already a problem right there that the running back is fumbling because Anthony Grant has fumbling issues. Matt Rule already said he had fumbling issues in the past as well. And then you know what he does? He decides, oh yeah, he's a great idea to go ahead and play him in the fourth quarter for four minute office when we're trying to chew up clock and making sure that we keep the ball. That is an example of not knowing your personnel whatsoever. I bet you know what? Nebraska follows 
follows that up by having Jeff Sims throw an interception right into the defender when they're trying to drive down the field for a game-winning field goal. And then Nebraska's defense melts apart. They allow Minnesota to get into field goal range. And then Minnesota's kicker made the game-winning field goal as time expired, which is how Nebraska lost 13 to 10. And they lost because they were unprepared for those situations. Matt Rule has been running his mouth all offseason long about how his teams were always going to be prepared for fourth quarters and how they were going to be able to grind out tough victories. And guess what? He was unable to do that. And honestly, I'm not surprised that he struggled to do that because of the fact that in Carolina, whenever his teams played a tight ball game, he would always find ways to lose games. Keep the game close and he will find a way to blow the game for you. That's the saying that I have for Matt, the fool rule, as in Matt Rule is a fool because of the fact that Matt Rule continues to make foolish mistakes week in and week out. And I'm starting to see that he didn't learn his lesson in the collegiate game. And then you got Deion Sanders, who took over the worst football team in college football in Colorado, where they only won one game last year and they go up against the defending runner-up champions and TCU and guess what he beat TCU at TCU with Janu Sanders his son balling out his son threw for over 500 yards he threw for four touchdowns and he threw the gateway touchdown they also had Travis Hunter who by the way is an extremely underrated player he plays both wide receiver and cornerback he had 11 receptions 119 receiving yards he also contributed with three tackles in an incredible interception which by the way if he didn't intercept TCU could kick the field goal and they ended up losing the game by three points so if that's not valuable for Colorado I don't know what is because Travis Hunter was an absolute baller and then of course the running back scored four touchdowns he had one rushing touchdown three receiving touchdowns including the gate winning touchdown and the fact that Dylan Edwards is getting overshadowed by Shanu Sanders and Travis Hunter that should tell you how good Colorado played against TCU and how about Deion Sanders getting those guys prepared to play if Matt Rule was coaching Colorado against TCU they would not have won that game they would have gotten blown out to TCU and now in Nebraska they get to go up against Colorado this upcoming Saturday I predict Colorado will end up beating them down pretty bad because of the fact that Colorado already beat TCU who was a pretty good ball club now they're going to go up against Nebraska which should be a piece of cake honestly for Colorado they should take care of business and win that ball game as long as they practice the right way look the only way Nebraska is going to win that game is if they play dirty on Travis Hunter and get worn out and try to make some dirty plays on him to wear out his body because from what I've seen with Matt Rule he's not going to out coach Deion Sanders whatsoever and the fact that Matt Rule was talking so much smack to Deion Sanders this entire offseason man now he looks so foolish because of the fact that Nebraska lost the game where they were out coached in the fourth quarter and in the two minute drill while Colorado managed to force an upset victory against the defending runner up champs in TCU if that's not getting on I don't know what is and I think he's going to get on again this upcoming Saturday I want to read some quotes that I got from 24 7 sports that Matt Rule was saying about Deion Sanders back in the spring and you guys tell me if he sounds foolish or not all right so here's the first quote so it says quote I hear other schools say they can't wait for today the transfer portal they can't wait to go out i can't wait to coach my guys let me tell you that i'm not here i'm not thinking about anybody else but this team out here and i have to say to that first quote what what is matt rule the fool talking about this is a foolish statement that he is saying look man the transfer portal even though i have criticisms about it, it's here to stay in college football and if you're a great college football head coach you're going to figure out how to work that thing and use that to your advantage and the fact that this clown is complaining about the transfer portal this tells me that this guy is not a winner whatsoever and it tells me that he doesn't do well to adjustments which quite frankly is stupid considering that you are a head coach a head coach has to be good at making adjustments Matt Rule is not good at making adjustments whatsoever so he already made a fool out of himself with that statement and then he also says in the next statement by saying that quote if you notice in our videos that we post and I'm proud to post these they're always of us working they're never of us talking this program is built on work it's not built on hype and honestly Matt Rule just freaking lied right there Rule the fool spoke up and just lied again because of the fact that he's saying that his team is not built on hype and that he doesn't do a lot of talking but when I talk about Matt Rule all he does is talk stupidly week after week game after game practice after practice and this dude just constantly tries to overhype up his product even though his product is trash and that's why a lot of people trash on Matt Rule because of the fact that this guy is talking smack about Deion Sanders he didn't even have the decency to say oh yeah the transfer forward yeah it's flawed and then give a coaching speak answer no he had a single out Deion Sanders yeah he didn't say Deion Sanders in the quote but he basically was talking about him because there were some hype videos that Deion Sanders was making and he was asked about Deion Sanders so yeah he just basically talked smack about Deion Sanders openly I'm thinking does this dude even know what he's saying does he even realize the implications that he's putting out there Deion Sanders is probably looking at this and thinking man does this man rule guy even understand how the game of football works you need to be building the best possible team in the best possible way as soon as possible because what do fans want to see they want to see a winning product and they would prefer to see it sooner rather than 
later. And the fact that Matt Rule's talking about, oh yeah, I need a slow build. I need time to rebuild this thing. Man, they're paying you eight years for $74 million. They don't got time for a slow rebuild. They paid you that money because they think that you're a winner and that you need to be able to build a winning product sooner rather than later. Anyways, though, Matt Rule looking foolish with those two quotes that I just shared to you guys right there. He's also going to get owned this upcoming Saturday. This guy is starting Jeff Sims at quarterback, which is just a joke of a statement to even be making. Colorado is going to win this game by the score of 34 to 17. Deion Sanders is going to own Matt Rule both off the field and on the field, which means that Deion Sanders is going to outcoach Matt Rule. And I got Matt Rule losing by 17 points. Remember, anytime any team scores over 17 points, that means Matt Rule is going to automatically lose the game more often than not because of the fact that Matt Rule does not do well when teams score 17 points or more. I'm sorry, Matt Rule, but that's the reality of the situation that you create for yourself. That's why I call you Matt Rule the fool because that's exactly what you do. You do nothing but make foolish statements and make foolish decisions on the football field. So that is why Deion Sanders will own Matt Rule in their rebuilds as well as their head-to-head -head matchup this week as Colorado will beat Nebraska by the score of 34 to 17. Remember, go ahead and subscribe to Sports Guy Talking, like the video, and please comment down below. If you guys do that, I may shout you guys out in my Instagram story every Monday. That will be for the at Dustin Ness Tran Instagram account. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at Dustin Ness Tran and at Sports Guy Talking. Also, go follow me on Twitter at Dustin Ness Tran. Again, go ahead and do those things that I just told you guys to go do. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the content that was just produced. Peace out. I hope you enjoyed that video. Want more Sports Guy Talking, the home of great sports content? Make sure you click that subscribe button to get the latest from Sports Guy Talking. Go ahead and like the video. Comment down below. Check the description box on the video in order to follow my Instagram and Twitter. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from the YouTube channel, Sports Guy Talking.